Truly, it's a special time of year. I think for all of us, we could ask, well, what makes Christmas so special? Now, the easy answer is probably the Sunday school answer. You know what the Sunday school answer is, right? Jesus. What's brown and lives in the forest and his hair all over the place, right? Jesus. That's the Sunday school answer. But you know what? It's also the right answer. Jesus truly is the one who makes Christmas special. He's the one who was prophesied, as we saw. Today, you saw the evidence right before your eyes. Jesus was no ordinary child. There may have been hundreds, if not thousands, of other babies born that same day. And yet, none of them had their birth prophesied. None of them was born of a virgin. In fact, no one before Jesus and no one after Jesus would be born of a virgin. He's unique. He is so special, so wonderful. This is the one whom angels proclaimed his birth to shepherds watching their flocks by night. This is the one whom the shepherds rushed to go and find and told the story in awe and wonder of. This is the one who his star appeared and wise men from the east came, probably kings, wise men, that came and they opened their treasures to him. This is the one who was born king. There were kings before him, but they were born princes. They were born commoners and became king. This one was special. He was born king. But today, we all know the story. Today, we've all seen the evidence. We all understand why Christmas is so special. But I wonder what would happen if we changed the question just a little bit. What makes Christmas so special to me? See, we all could answer the same way again, couldn't we? Jesus. And that truly is the right answer. And I hope for each and every one of us in this place that Jesus truly is what makes Christmas so special to me personally. But some of you could add to that, couldn't you? Some of you, maybe you got engaged on Christmas or even maybe you got married on Christmas. That's what makes Christmas so special to you. There's always that reminder every year at Christmas time that this was the day that we made a commitment to one another. This is the day we started our lives together. Some of you guys were born on Christmas Day. Happy birthday. Maybe over the years you've endured and put up with the dual Christmas birthday gift. You know what I'm talking about? But it, but it was still so special because you said, I was born on the day that we celebrate Jesus' birth. You've always kind of had it in your heart that you share a birthday with Jesus. Not many other people get to do that. But for some of you in this place, Christmas isn't so special. In fact, Christmas may be painful. Some of you remember the family get-togethers and the gatherings and how everybody got together and now you're alone. Or maybe your Christmas is separated over several households because of things like divorce. Maybe it's a time where you remember that a loved one died on Christmas Day. And every year, Christmas is a painful reminder of loss. And you're kind of wondering today, what could make Christmas so special after all that's taken place. Today I want to offer all of us, whether Christmas is special or maybe Christmas is painful, I want to offer you one thing from the Word of God that should make Christmas so special to all of us. Luke chapter number 2, verse number 12. Luke chapter 2, verse number 12. The angel is speaking to the shepherds, telling them what has just taken place, that Jesus has been born. And now in Luke chapter 2, verse number 12, the angel speaks and says, and this will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. Now, we could look at that and we could say, well, what is so special about that? Maybe it's unusual, yeah, not many people would lay their baby in a feeding trough for animals. But is that really a a special thing. Is that really miraculous? It, it, in fact, as I read the Word of God, I was studying this out, and in some translations, the angels say, you will find this miracle sign that there will be a baby wrapped in cloth, lying in a manger. And we could look at that and say, where's the miracle? It was a very natural, very common thing. In fact, that was a lowly stable. And they laid Jesus in a manger. How could that be a miracle? Here's why, because the same thing that made Jesus so special, the same thing that made Christmas so special, is the same thing that makes that a miracle, same thing that makes that manger special, is that the Son of God, the Eternal One, was robed in flesh and 
came and lived among us. That's the sign to each and every one of us. A couple of thoughts that I just want to pull out of this verse. First is this, that the most heavenly and holy can be found in the most humble of places. Today, some of you guys are going to go gather at your homes, and maybe there's a little bit of shame there as people come to your house. Well, they have a nicer house. We should have gone to their house. Uh, they, they always bring better gifts than we bring, and all we had was this much money to just do a little something for them. Maybe around the dinner table, you're not the best cook, and you know, you, you've got the, 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 the aunties and the uncles and, and the people that taught you how to cook that could school you in culinary arts, and, and you're kind of saying, well, it's just a, a small meal. It's just a small token of my appreciation for all they've done, but really, it, it's not that much. But listen, if Jesus, God, came in the flesh, if he disrobed himself of the glory of heaven, the highest and most exalted place, if he could condescend and come down and take the form of a lowly baby, that means that we can find the most sacred and the most holy in the most humble of places. Today in your house, find Jesus in your home. Today in your meal, find Jesus there at the table. Because the most holy one can be found in the most humble of places. The other thought I want to bring out is this, is that sacred and special can even be found in the lowly and common. Maybe you never thought of your family as very holy. Maybe you never thought of your dinner table as very holy. In fact, maybe every year you bring out the same tree, bring out the same decorations. You kind of have the same gifts. And some of you guys in this place have teenagers. All they want is a gift card or money, right? They don't want anything special. Just give me money. I'll buy my own things, right? And year after year, it's gotten kind of old and it's gotten kind of routine and you do this family first and then we're going to do that family second and then we're going to open up our gifts third. And it doesn't seem like it's so special anymore. Maybe year after year you've spent Christmas alone because of that loss and because of that pain. And today you say, how could this day be special? Here's how. Because God is with us. Emmanuel. When you find Jesus there in the most common of places, all of a sudden a miracle takes place and it becomes special. He's the one who makes every joy, who makes every blessing even more special, doesn't he? The fact that you share an anniversary or a birthday with Jesus just makes it all the more special. But you know what else? Just as the pain and the suffering of Jesus has come over into our lives, because don't you know Jesus was acquainted with suffering and sorrows? In fact, the Bible says he was a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. That if you can find Jesus in the loneliness, that if you can find Jesus in the pain, that if you can find Jesus in your suffering, the book of 2 Corinthians tells us all that so also will his comfort and will his peace flow over into our lives because he is the Prince of Peace. The angels brought good news of a great joy which shall be to all men peace on earth and goodwill towards man. Jesus is the sign. Jesus is the one who shows us that God not only loves us, but he's with us. The sacred and the special can be found in the lowly and in the common. Today, find Jesus in your Christmas. Today, in your gatherings, in your gifts, in your dinners, in your celebrations, even in your times by yourself, find Jesus and he will make it oh so special. This is a special day. This is a miraculous day. May Jesus be found in your home and in your heart. Today, maybe you came into this place and it's been a year since you've been in church. Maybe the last time you came to church was on Easter. Maybe you're infrequent. Maybe today is your first time ever stepping inside of a church service. You got a door hanger on your door or maybe... A friend invited you. Somebody said you should come to my church at Christmas. Maybe today you were driving around and saw a billboard. You came into this place and you said, you know what, I need to go to church. I need to do something. I need to make a change in my life. And today you don't view yourself as very holy. Today you don't view yourself as very special. But today, if Jesus can be found in you, he will take your lowly, common life and a miracle will take place on the inside of you. And he will make you holy. He will make you special. Sometimes we get the wrong idea about church. We get the wrong idea about heaven and hell and God and Jesus and all that. Sometimes we think that it's just enough just to come and sit in church service 
and identify as a Christian. Maybe, maybe you've sat in church services all your life. Maybe your parents drug you to church as a child. Maybe they hung a cross or a St. Christopher around your neck. Had you baptized or christened as a child. Took you to religious classes like Sunday school or catechism class. Maybe Sabbath school class. And really all your life they've done religious things and you were born in America. America is a Christian nation. Everybody born in America is going to heaven. We're not any other religions. We're not Buddhist. We're not Muslim. We're not Hindus. Therefore we're Christians headed for heaven denying our presence in hell, right? Wrong. Did you know that nowhere in the Bible does it say that because you sit in church service or that because your parents raised you in church tell you Christian, that makes you Christian. It's like me saying, you know what, I really want to be a fish. I, I'm done with this human thing. I, I'd really like to be a fish. And so I go out to the Pacific Ocean. I sit in the water, I blow bubbles, and I swim around, and I say, I'm a fish, I'm a fish, I'm a fish. You know, I can sit there as long as I want, and I will never become a fish. I'll become a slimy, wet, pruny human, right? But I'll never be a fish. In the same way, you can't just sit in church service, call yourself a Christian, and that makes you a Christian. Sometimes people get the wrong idea and they think, well, if I just do enough good works, maybe God will let me into heaven. You know, I used to be bad, but I've cleaned up my act. Now, I've really been good lately, and, and I've been trying. I mean, I, I did come to church today. And, and you know what? I haven't uh, done a lot of bad things like other people, you know. And, and I've been helping out, giving money to charities. You know, I'm wearing shoes that help people across the world. Uh, I'm drinking water that digs wells in other parts of the, the planet. And, and I think that my good finally outweighs my bad. I've been nice to my neighbors. I called my mom this morning and said, Merry Christmas. You know, doesn't God appreciate that? Doesn't God see that? And while God does love goodness, at the same time, the Bible says there is none good but God. In fact, the Bible tells us that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. In other words, nobody's perfect. And you're not going to make it to heaven just based on your own goodness because the standard to get in heaven based on your goodness and your merit is perfection. You're not going to make it. There's only one who is perfect. His name is Jesus. Sometimes people think, well, maybe if I just get involved and I help out and volunteer in church, if I can sing in the choir, carry the pastor's Bible, make decisions in a church. People think of me as a leader and I, I get a membership card or, you know, even if I teach in the Bible classes, doesn't that mean that I'm going to heaven? I, I mean, I think I'm going to go to heaven. I think I'm all right with God because I've helped out in church, volunteered, became a member. But you know that nowhere in the Bible does it say that God is waiting at the gates of heaven looking for your volunteer hours sheet. He's not looking for your membership card to a church before you can enter the gates of heaven. Today, you know that you want to identify with God. You know that you want to be a Christian. You know that you want to head for heaven and deny hell. No one wants to go to hell, and it's a very real place. Come on, let's get real. It's in the Old and New Testament. Jesus himself spoke of it. And just by denying its existence doesn't make it go away. You're going to have to face the reality of it. And not all roads lead to heaven like some would have us to believe. That's so foolish. I mean, think about that in the natural for a second. What if I told you all roads lead to the moon? Just dr keep driving, keep driving. You'll make it there eventually. You'd say you're crazy. Not all roads lead to the moon. So what makes us think that after God sends Jesus to the earth, born of a virgin, all the prophecies, beaten, bloody mess, hung on a cross, that after he does all that, that God says, whatever you want to do, just keep, keep doing it. It's fine. Listen, the invitation goes out to all, but the way is narrow, and there are few who find it. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and life, and no man goes to the Father except by me. It's God's heaven. We've got to get there God's way. You say, but I know God. I mean, I know about Jesus, and, and I sing the songs every Christmas. I celebrate Easter and the resurrection every year of my life. Doesn't that mean that I'm a Christian because I know who God is? Well, no. If that was the case, then demons would be headed for heaven, right? Because they know who God is. The devil himself knows who Jesus is and can quote scriptures out of his mouth, and yet that doesn't qualify him for heaven. So everybody look up here at me for a second. This is not about what you have in your head. It's not how you get to God. That's not how you become a Christian, headed for heaven, denying your presence in hell, but rather, this is about your heart. Jesus said it like this. He said, you must be born again. He said, oh, I didn't realize you were one of those Christians. Well, listen, there is no other way you're going to make it to heaven. And I know Hollywood movies, television books, and the internet have made it out to be some weirdo, goofy, crazy Christianity that no one wants to have any part of. But listen, unless you have a part of being born again, you have no part in the kingdom of heaven because Jesus said you must be born again. Not maybe, not it's a way. No, it is the way. You have to be born again if you want to go to heaven. You say, well, what's being born again mean? Well, it's always meant the same thing. From the beginning of the Bible to the end of the Bible, it's always meant that you have given God all of your heart and that you've given God all of your life. As you do that, Jesus is found in you. That old man, that sinful man, dead, gone, buried with Jesus, but the resurrection power of Jesus Christ raises you up a new man. There's a new creation that goes on in your heart and you're born again. 
brand new on the inside. That only happens when you are born again, when you give God all of your heart, when you give God all of your life. Today, if you know that you are not going to make it, today, if you wandered into this place, and you were searching, today, you're found. Today, God's calling you home. I want to lead you in a simple prayer today to invite Jesus in your heart. You can be born again, headed for heaven, denying your presence in hell. I'm going to give you an opportunity in a moment. Here's what it's going to look like. In a moment, I'm going to say, everybody bow your heads and close your eyes. And I'm going to have you examine your heart and your life. I want you to think about your life, where you're at with God. And here's how I'm going to do that. I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to say, what if today was your last day? What if you died? Would you go to heaven or would you go to hell? I want you to answer that question in your heart. No one will know the answer but you and God. It's that simple. Just answer that question. And how you answer that question will determine a lot about where you're at with God. Some of you in this place will say, I think I'm going to go to heaven. I I hope I'm going to go to heaven. Maybe I'll go to heaven. I really don't know. Some of you will answer and say, I know that I wouldn't make it. I'd end up in hell if I died today. If you answer the question in any of those ways, listen, you can't think, hope, or maybe you're in the kingdom of heaven. You got to know beyond a shadow of a doubt. And today, if you know you wouldn't make it, it's time to change direction from the way that you were going and go God's direction. Don't wait till you can clean up your life. Listen, God will come in. He'll recreate you and he'll clean up your life from the inside out. Can't be good enough to get you in and you also can't be bad enough to keep you out. God has opened the invitation. Today, will you do it his way? Giving God all of your heart and giving God all of your life. After I ask you that question and you answer it, I'm going to count to three just like this. One, two, three, and I'll pop my hands together. Bang. When you hear the sound of my hands popping together, bang. Just like that. That's your opportunity to raise your hand. What you're doing by the raising of your hand is you're responding today. You're saying something. You're saying, I want to give God all my heart. I want to give God all my life. I want to be born again, headed for heaven, denying my presence in hell. I'll see your hand go up. I'll count it. You can put it right back down. Okay? And then after that, I'm going to lead you in a prayer to invite Jesus into your heart. You're going to be born again. If you want to be included in that prayer today, it's just this easy, simply raising your hand. You say, well, why do I got to do that? Because Jesus said, if you confess me before men, I'm a man. I'll see your hand go up. I'll count it. You can put it right back down. He says, I will confess you before my Father who is in heaven. But if you deny me, I will deny you. Today, your call. Today, your choice. We give him all of your heart. We give him all of your life. All across this auditorium, back in the family rooms, wherever you're at, watching by television, in the foyer, down at the Love Rock Cafe. Come on, wherever you're at, all over the world. God sees. God's watching. You can raise your hand, and you can pray this prayer as well, wherever you're at. Who should raise your hand in a moment? If you've been running from God instead of two, God, I'm speaking to you. Who should raise your hand if you're not sure about your salvation? Today's your day. Make sure. Who should raise their hand if you've never done this before? Come on, today is your day of salvation. Or finally, today, if you're lukewarm, you say, well, what's that? Little in, little out, little up, little down, little token prayer every now and again. An occasional church attendance. God is something in your life, but he's not everything. You're not opposed to God, but you're not wholehearted for God. Listen, if that's your relationship with Jesus, you're not going to make it. How do I know that? Because only people that are not real Christians will be ejected and rejected from the body of Christ. Today is your day of salvation. I'm going to ask everybody at this time, please bow your heads. Please close your eyes. As you do that, I want to ask you this question. I want you to examine where you're at in your relationship with God. What if today was your last day on the earth? What if you died? Would you go to heaven or would you go to hell? Just answer that question in your heart right now. If you're saying, I think, I hope, maybe, I don't know, or I know I wouldn't make it, get ready to get your hands up. This is your time. This is your moment of salvation. Here we go. You ready to get your hands up all together on the count of three? Can I have some lights in the place, please? One, two, three. Let me see your hands. If you need to give God all of your heart, need to give God all of your life. There's one, two, three, four, five. Thank you. Six, seven, eight. Got you right there. Nine, ten. Thank you. God bless you. Eleven, twelve up on top over on this side. Come on, raise them up high for me right now. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Who else today? Fourteen wise people already. Get it up high for me if that's you. 14, 15 right there, 16, got you over there, 16, 17, got you up there, thank you, 18, 19, 20, 21, right here, 21, up on top, 22, got you over there, thank you, 22, on this side, 23, back in the family room, I got you over there, thank you, 23, 24, got you over there, thank you, thank you, if I saw your hand, you can put it down, if you have not yet raised your hand, not yet responded, but you know you need to, your heart's pounding out of your chest, you're wondering if you should do this, yeah, you should, let's go for it today, come on. Giving God all of your heart, giving God all of your life. I didn't embarrass them and I won't embarrass you. Anybody else real quick that I did not already see? Anybody else? About 22, 23 wise people. Anybody else you need to give God all your heart? Need to give God all of your life. There's 24 back there. Thank you. God bless you. Who else today? Who else today? Anybody else real quick if that's you? 24, 25. Thank you. Right there. God bless you. 
Anybody else real quick? I got you. All right, 25. 25, 26, thank you. Who else today? Need to give God all of your heart and all of your life. 26, 27 up on top. I see you back there. Thank you. 27 wise people. Anybody else? I'm going to give one more call. Listen, you were sitting there praying and saying, God, reveal yourself to me. If you're real right now, have that preacher give one more call. Listen, God is speaking to your heart right now. If you just said that in your heart, God is calling you out. He's real. Listen, you've heard and seen the evidence today. You've heard the preaching of the gospel. Now it's your turn. Will you respond? Giving them all of your heart, all of your life. Thank you right here. Got you. God bless you. Anybody else? Anybody else real quick that I did not already see? Anybody else? Anybody else? 27, 28. Who else today? Anybody else? Real quick. Need to give God all of your heart and all of your life. Anybody else? Anybody else? All right. Let's give the Lord a great big praise today. About 27 or 28 wise people. Amen. Now listen, I'm going to lead you in that prayer. So would you all stand in the presence of God today and let's prepare our hearts to pray. Those of you that raised your hand or if you should have raised your hand but you didn't, it's not too late. I'm going to lead you in a simple prayer to invite Jesus in your heart. You're going to be born again right here, right now. Those of you that are watching in the foyer or maybe you're online, you raised your hand, get ready to pray this prayer together as well. I'm going to pray this simple prayer, simple phrases, all right? Everybody's going to repeat to encourage you out loud, okay? Now, this is not about the words of your mouth. If you miss a couple words, it's okay. This is about the expression of your heart right now. So let's put our hearts in the Lord, everybody. Once again, bow your heads, close your eyes, and let's go before the Lord together in prayer. Everybody say these words. Say, Father God, I come to you now in Jesus' name. I give you all of my heart and all my life. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. This Christmas day, let Jesus be found in me. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Forgive me of, your, of my sin and wash me with your blood. Give me a brand new start with a brand new heart. Let it be known this Christmas, 2016, that I am a Christian. I'm headed for heaven, leaving hell behind. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a great big praise today. Hallelujah. God is so good.